past three years. To watch him grow, the legacy he established when he left, Kobe, will resonate in the city of Los Angeles forever. No words can describe how I feel about you guys. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I, God, I love you guys. Remarkably, it has been a year since Kobe Bryant, along with his daughter Gigi and seven others, died when their helicopter crashed on a foggy morning in California. Anniversaries are an invitation to spend more time with your thoughts, to mourn, or to grieve. But it doesn't have to be that. It can be a time to celebrate and smile at the memories. Something players did with Rachel Nichols, as they remembered the first time they shared the floor with the guy who they grew up with on their walls. The first game I played against Cole, the very first time I played against him. The first time ever, got, like, actually playing against him. You remember, like, damn, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on a court with Kobe, like. I was uh, just in awe. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if I could even uh, do it any justice, really. It's a guy who I would tape on my wall when I lived in Spring Hill in apartment 602. To be able to share the floor with him was um, was like a, you know, for any kid that has aspirations or, or, or has uh, inspiring moments from someone, it's just like a, a sense of awe. And Rachel Nichols, who hosted that show on The Jump, as she does every day on The Jump, joins us now. And Rachel, as I say, this day doesn't have to be sad, but it does certainly invite emotions to visit you. And as you're talking to these men, recollecting their memories, what, what was emotional to you to hear them share their thoughts? Well, it's interesting. I was reminded of that Maya Angelou quote about people won't remember what you did or said, it's how you made them feel. And that was a through line talking to all these guys, how Kobe made them feel. He was the NBA for them. He was legitimacy. The fact that he lined up against them, that he blocked their shot, that he trash talked them, anything. To them, it meant they were really in the league. And you have to remember, a lot of these guys have never met Michael Jordan, right? They could touch sure. Kobe. They could play against Kobe. And he meant the NBA to them. And of course, then when they lost him, it was about something much bigger. That is such an interesting yardstick to use him as the guy that could legitimize them. And as we see them talk, many of whom have become champions since, was there sort of a common thread about, in the same way Kobe wanted to go up against Michael, the way they wanted to go up against him and try to earn their keep against that legend? Well, certainly there were a lot of guys recounting the trash talk that Kobe <laughs> let them have and sort of... <laughs> Sure. <laughs> how he would mark them or, or mark who he was. And even in his later years, the guys who just caught him at the end there, that he wanted to show them he was still Kobe Bryant. Steve Kerr also contributed to this piece, which was so generous of him. And, of course, the first time he played Kobe Bryant was the first time Michael Jordan played Kobe Bryant. They all three were on the court together. And he said the inquisitive nature of Kobe, the audacity he had in those moments to be playing against Michael for the very first time, Michael Jordan, and that all he was doing was asking Michael questions, wanting advice, wanting to know, what should I do when I step this way? He's like, I couldn't believe this 18-year-old kid. And yet there he was. That was Kobe. And I think back to the, the ceremony there in the Staples Center where Michael with tears streaked on his face admitted how annoying that was. This little brother yes. that wouldn't <laughs> stop tugging on Superman's cape, but that that is what made him love him in the end. And I, I think of what your, uh, your fellow Northwestern alum, J.A. Adande, said in the athletic piece uh, today about the immortality of Kobe, about realizing that a day doesn't go by without thinking about him or seeing an image of him. And I just wonder, Rachel, how you might amplify the idea that truly the legacy of the man never goes away in this league. Well, certainly, I live in L.A. now, and, and for so many people here, Kobe Bryant is Los Angeles. I mean, we have the Hollywood sign, I guess, but there's no other figure in the last two decades who has symbolized this city. So I think the heart and soul of the city I now call my home will always be about Kobe Bryant. For me, though, personally, Scott, you have to remember, I met Kobe when he was an 18-year-old rookie. I wasn't much older, and, and I was so impressed year after year by him for his capacity to change to evolve, to keep getting better. That story about Michael Jordan, about how he just wanted to know more and more and more. And that was, of course, true in basketball for the first decade or so, where he was so consumed by the game, but also true of him and as a person. And he wasn't perfect. He made some serious mistakes, things I know that he deeply regretted that go beyond being mistakes. But the fact is, he also knew that what you did afterward was also important, that it mattered. And he tried to continue to be 
someone who could evolve, who could matter, who could make the things that he did count. And I think the fact that he was able to do that in his later years, and especially after he retired, is the warmth you hear from some of the people who knew him talking about him, that he continued to evolve, he continued to get better, that who he was wasn't who he had to be. And I just hope that everybody learns from that and can take that with them as they want to take a little piece of Kobe with them from this day forward. As we know, Rachel, it is often so difficult when an athlete leaves the stage, but it struck me that this was a man who was truly a man in full after, as he was evolving into this second act as a filmmaker, and most importantly, in that role that he loved more than any other, uh, that of a father. And that's something that I'm lucky enough as a girl dad to relate to uh, as well. Are you going to be, are you going to tweet that? Is that, is that piece that we showed a snippet of from the jump? Is yes. that something we can, that people, wait, could you direct us to where we could find it? Absolutely. Twitter, Instagram, it's all on there. You can see it right at the top of my feed. And of course, our whole two hour show today honoring the legacy of Kobe and celebrating him. We really focused on his life, not his death, all the great moments he had on the court, talking to former teammates, friends, and that's all available for replay on the ESPN app too. So there's my plug, uh, really hearing from some of the guys around the league, the legends around the NBA talking about Kobe. You really enjoy walking down memory lane with them. Consecutive, which is the longest active win streak in the NBA had an Austin Rivers problem early. Rivers three five point lead. Rivers three eight for eight from the floor to start the game. A minute later, Rivers all three of these nine of nine from the field. Knicks lead by thirteen. Steve, your man, Rivers, flowing 10 of 10 from the floor, 25 points in the first half, first player in the last quarter century to come off the bench and do that in the first half. Knicks led by 13 at the break. Here comes the home team, Donovan Mitchell, three of his own, Jazz down five. Rivers on the bench, Boyan Bogdanovich. Can't leave him alone. No. Bogey, triple, tie game. Cross roll coming. Tie game. Late third. Alley. Emmanuel quickly. Nerlens Noel. Kentucky Brotherhood. Jordan Clarkson, Rudy Gobert. There to follow. Tying things back up at 78. Ensuing Knicks possession. R.J. Barrett hits the three. The Knicks had the lead, but the Jazz have reeled off six in a row to start the fourth, by my math. They got a five-point lead. We'll be keeping tabs on that. Clips, take it on the Hawks. Take it on the Hawks. No Kawhi, no Paul George. Ty Lue wearing the Kobe mask. Reggie Jackson and Serge Ibaka both averaging under 13 a game. They would step in, try to fill the void for the winners of seven in a row. Battle for it off the glass there. Jackson with a tip in. Ibaka drops it in. Both go for 13 in the first half. Five point lead, but then Trey Young. Float game. On point. Young beginning to warm. Doesn't take him much. <laughs> Through the traffic, hands it to Clint Capella. 13 and 19. Then Young. Pulls from three, bottoms, going off in the third. Corner three, everybody loves the corner three. 14 in the third, not done. Four minutes remaining, leading by five. Give it up to Capella, nope, I'll do it myself. Twisted the ankle there, but would come right back. Young, just a 34 footer. Points to the spot and uh, remembering Kobe. 2 4 there, game high 38 as the Hawks and the Clippers winning streak, a nine point victory. So, up to the moment, look at the Western Conference standing. Jazz currently second in the West. They'll slide behind the Clippers if they were to lose to the Knicks. New this season, team seven through 10 will have a play in tournament to determine the final two seeds. Alabama is 